Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a instructional video about how to measure the swing diameter or swing radius of your telescope system. This is intended for Starfront customers or prospective Starfront customers. So if that's not you, then you might not find this video very interesting, but if you like geometry, then it still might be pretty cool for you. So swing diameter or swing radius is basically how big the floor impact or the consumption of floor space is for your telescope. And it's very important for determining what your pricing tier is here at the observatory. And so in this video, I'm just gonna give you a succinct way to go about measuring it accurately. Okay, just to get a little bit more specific about our definitions of swing radius or swing diameter, it is the maximum possible space your telescope can occupy on the floor, including flat panels and any kind of moving devices. So if you have a flat panel, your swing radius is the size at which your telescope occupies when the flat panel is open to its greatest possible extent. So the reason we do this is because we do not want any telescopes to ever impact each other. And so if there's a possibility of your flat panel hitting your neighbor's scope, we need to know about this. And so the actual maximum size of the flat panel is factored into this calculation. And depending on where you put it, it can also change the swing radius. So. With that being said, let's go ahead and measure this system here, uh, and I'll demonstrate to you how to measure swing diameter both with the flat panel and without. Okay, so right here is kind of a textbook example system, equatorial mount with a refractor, and it also has a flat panel. The easiest and most direct way to measure the swing diameter is going to be starting from the RA axis center of rotation. So here we can see this point is gonna be right here, this is the pivot point about which all of your gear is going to be thrown around. Now, the part where it gets a little more complex to define is the swing diameter is the distance from this point to wherever your telescope is maximally distant away from this spot. So let's just say, for example, here that for a lot of telescopes, you would measure from this point to the top end of the telescope here. So we would just directly measure from here to here, and we would see, you know, we've got 25 inches of space from the RA pivot point to its most distant region. And that gives us directly the swing radius. Let's say I also wanted to measure how big this was with the flat panel maximally extended. We would measure from the RA pivot point to this most distant point, which is the flat panel. And again, we see 25 inches to this maximal point, swing diameter of 50. Now for some systems, it's not always the front. Sometimes it can actually be the back of the telescope that extends the furthest. And we can measure this too from the same pivot point on RA all the way to the back of the camera. And what we find here is that all the way to the back is actually 27 inches in radius. So what we're most interested in measuring is from RA pivot point to wherever the most distant part of the telescope is. And that's gonna depend on if you have a flat panel, where it balances, what type of scope it is. But here we can see in this example, we've checked multiple points and we've identified that the furthest point is the back of the camera. And that's gonna be where an impact would happen first because that's the part of the setup that extends the furthest out. Now you may be wondering, don't you need to like, slew the mount around, measure how this, you know, actually manifests on the floor. And you actually don't, uh, no matter where the mount is, the physical possible greatest dimension it can take up is going to be that distance. It doesn't need to be slewed around at all to know. Okay, here is another good example system we can use as reference. Again, we're measuring from the RA axis pivot point all the way to the most distant part of the telescope. In this case, it's going to be the very top of the CDK 12 and a half. So I can get my tape measure. I can go out to this top point of the scope, measure all the way down to the RA axis pivot point, And I can see roughly that this telescope is going to occupy about 70 inches of diameter. Pretty basic. One other key thing to note is if we were measuring off the back of the camera here, as you can see, we would measure all the way to the end of the cables uh, because you don't want your cables rubbing against the wall or getting caught on someone else's telescope. So if you're going to be measuring this with your telescope set up, you should fully cable it, uh, fully measure 
how far those cables come out because that's how it's going to be set up in the observatory and we're going to want to know what it's like in this state. All right, so here's a good question. What if you have a piggyback on your telescope? How does this change the measurement? Uh, how would that work? And the answer is it doesn't change the way you measure it at all. We're still going from the RA axis pivot point here on a different style of mount on the CEM where you know this is the pivot point right here in the center of the mount. We're gonna be measuring from here to the maximally distant point away from this spot. So in this case, we may not know for sure. We may not be able to easily visually judge where that is, but we can go ahead and measure it. So I can go from here to the back of the camera cables and I can see we're at 27 and a half inches to get to the back of the camera cables. If we're considering the piggyback, it looks like we are 31 inches there to the top of the piggyback. We can check to the front, 32 inches about to the front end of the top of the piggyback. We are 28 inches to the top front end of the scope. And one other thing to measure for sanity is you can also measure to the end of the counterweight bar because some mounts actually the counterweight bar is the limiting factor for their diameter. So we can measure it there to be 48. So we know from this system that the radius is about 32 all the way to the top of the filter wheel on the piggyback. Irrelevant of what's going on, the geometry of this measurement stays the same. All right, this swing diameter example is a really important one because it is the most frequently miscalculated one here at the observatory. We maybe get, you know, six out of seven, six out of eight epsilons incorrectly measured. So it's important I demonstrate this one for you to get it right. And again, nothing has changed here. We're still going from the RA axis pivot point to wherever the most distant region is. Now for the epsilon, 99.999% of the time, this distance actually goes all the way to the top of the camera and to the top of the cables. So if we measure from here to here, we can see that we are at 24 and a half inches. From here, the RA axis pivot point to the very top of the cables. We're not going from here to the scope. We're not going from here to the back of the scope. And we aren't measuring the length of the scope itself. And interesting thing to note is even with the flat panel on the Epsilon, the distance to the top of the cameras is still going to be the limiter. Because having this length combined with the moment arm of the RA mount produces a huge, huge, huge diameter. So if you intend to send an epsilon, uh, please be very careful about how you measure your swing diameter because it is frequently done incorrectly. Um, there are ways to really minimize the space an epsilon occupies. Uh, this can be done either by rotating the tube and its rings 90 degrees and then counterbalancing it on the other side. This can really help minimize your area. Um, or if you have a harmonic mount, it's possible to angle the camera directly downward for the larger epsilons. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it's a good example to know. Okay, right here I have a Newtonian on a harmonic mount. Again, it's the exact same. RA axis pivot point center to most distant zone. So going from here, we can check and try to find the maximum distance it occupies. 24 inches to the back end here and we've got again 24 inches to the front end so this one balances you know almost perfectly center on the scope we're 24 inches to both maximal end points and so we know its diameter is 48. here you can see how having the camera angled down on a newtonian can have a big impact on its diameter because if we had the camera on top instead of down low we would have you know probably a 32 inch total diameter occupied so you know just be strategic about where you place things including flat panels okay here's a really good scope where i can demonstrate how your flat panel placement is going to change what the diameter is so if we measure again from the ra pivot point up to the end of the flat panel it's 23 inches but let's say, imagine we flip the flat panel up top. We would measure it all the way up here and we would get 29 inches 
instead for diameter. So the placement of this flat panel here, whether or not we have it on the bottom or on the top, changes how much floor space the scope occupies. Now, in this interesting case, it's neither the flat pan, it's not the flat panel position that's impacting the diameter, it's actually the distance here to the top of the guide scope, which comes up to just a hair above 24. So there you go. All right, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, if the video form is a little confusing, I'm gonna throw up a diagram here on the screen, which you can pause and look at as a reference as well, just showing the steps and defining the geometry of the swing diameter. Uh, this is pretty important for you to know. Uh, if you're sending a telescope out to Starfront, I highly suggest when, you know, when you're doing your equipment tests, when you're setting things up, that you do this measurement yourself. All you need is a tape measure, and it's gonna save you and us a lot of confusion and discussion about planning where your telescope is actually going to go and how much it'll cost you per month. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed. I'll catch you on the next one.